Hey everybody, it's Lisa with TNL Pottery. So I'm very excited because I was asked by my local village if I would be a vendor at our first market. They're trying to do it on a once a month basis. Obviously, I won't be able to do it once a month because pottery takes so long to do. But I did agree to go ahead and do it. It comes up on April 9th and I only have three weeks to get everything together. I only have half of my stuff is bis fired. The other half has not even been bis fired and I have not even started glazing. So today I'm going to start my glazing process. Thankfully, a friend of mine um, gave me a bunch of his old glazes. They still work and i'm going to be using those products today to glaze the stuff that i already have bis fired and coming up this week i am going to bring the rest of the items to be bis fired and i will get me some underglazes because i do want to do some decorative underglaze too so because i have some pieces that need underglaze so the process of course for pottery is you make it on the wheel or you can hand build it then after you've built it and let it dry and trimmed and all that stuff and let it bone dry then you go and you get it bisque fired uh, that's the first firing that's to make it into a ceramic then you glaze it and some people don't glaze all of it they only glaze parts of it um, and then you bring it to be glaze fired and then then you have the final product so I'm at my second step with the glazing so we'll see what's going to happen with it so this uh, let me show y'all what I have for glazes helpful tip always research glazes especially those that are given to you after covering several of my pieces with these Mako stroking coats um, I did some research and I found that they are actually only supposed to be fired to cone 06, not cone 6. They can still be fired to cone 6, but it's going to give it a different color. The Mako Stroke and Coats, it seems like, are more like an underglaze. It's a more stable glaze, so I'm not sure how those pieces are going to come out. So always do your research about your glazes. So the first part of glazing that I have to do um, in preparation for glazing is I have to take my bisque wire and I have to take a clean, damp sponge with some water, a water bowl, and I have to wipe all of the excess particles that are still on the pot um, from the bisque fire. So while that's sitting to the side and drying, it won't take long to dry it off. Um, I did prepare also the next step, which is to put wax resist on the bottom of the pot, as well as a little bit of the rim. And that's going to keep the glaze from dripping down onto the shelf of the kiln. So I have some wax resist this is my first time doing all of this so hopefully everything comes out good um, I just put some of it in a cup and I am going to use a foam brush because I can just simply throw these away if I need to This is not the smartest way to clean your bisque fire to get it ready, ready to be glazed. After doing this for quite some time, I realized it would just be easier to dunk the pots in the water. And so that is what I did in the future. And that is what I would suggest for everyone else because it is less time consuming. But at this point, I had not figured that out. Here's a little note about using the wax resist on the bottom of the pots. You do not have to do that. The glaze will wash clean off of the pots before you glaze fire. So if you do mistakenly put some glaze in a spot that you don't want, you can wipe them off. What the wax resist does is it helps you from having to do that. It wipes really cleanly off of the area where you put that wax resist so that is why I'm 
putting it on the bottom of my pot. You can actually use the wax resist to make designs on your pottery, on your clay body. Um, once it's been bisque fired, you can take the wax resist and make the designs to where the natural clay does show whenever you do the glaze fire. I have at least one piece that I did that with and I hope to show you all in the next video whenever I reveal all of my pottery after it has been glaze fired. Ready to be glazed. Yay. I'm very excited about this. I am worried because I do not know what any of these colors are going to come out looking like. I don't know if the combinations that I picked are going to work together, but I did finish waxing all of the bottoms. So, and they are all dry. So now it's time to glaze. Yay. The best thing to do whenever you're glazing is to follow the instructions on the glaze bottle. They'll tell you about how many coats to put on, whether you're brushing the glaze on or dipping it. These glazes that I'm using right here are about 20 to 30 years old, but I did buy some new glazes to put on the other pieces. Another thing that you should always do is test fire. I learned by trial and error. So I'm really not sure how these glazes are going to come out and how the combinations will come together. So I will just see. You can layer multiple glaze colors together. That is what I'm doing at this point. I'm putting a second color on top and I just decided to put one coat of the second color to see how it comes out because it, the bottle said that it can be more of a transparent color. So that's what I'm doing right here. Okay, I'm still glazing. Um, it's a long process. But this is one piece that I'm really excited about. I got some underglaze that I put on top of it. I'm trying to figure out how to make the underglaze all shiny. So I'm going to attempt to put the underglaze, then a clear glaze on top of it, and then put some wax resist so that I can glaze the rest of the cup without it getting on the writing. So uh, it's very intricate writing. I used some stencils except for on this part, I didn't use stencils. I just did that on my own. resist on it.
you can see right here how the wax resist is keeping the glaze off of the areas where I put it. Uh, the glaze is beating up near it. And what I'm going to do next is just take a damp uh, paper towel and wipe the excess glaze off of that wax resist. And voila, it worked even better than I thought it would. Everywhere that I had put the wax resist, it was easy to take the excess glaze off of. And so I'm excited to see what the finished product will look like. So after about a week of working and I still have a couple more pieces to do, I am almost ready to bring my pieces to get them glaze fired. So these are the ones that I have that are actually glazed so far and the next video will show you all of the pieces once they're fired.